Have you ever dreamt you had the power of magical flight? As a child, I was exposed to two very beautiful and extensive mythologies. I grew up immersed in the classical myths of ancient Greece and the dream time of the Australian Aboriginal people. So I developed an addiction for grand interconnected narratives that involve magical flight and time travel. I was inspired by these stories of gods, heroes and spirits, facing and conquering terrifying monsters, traveling across the landscape, singing the world into existence. My childhood was one long road trip through antiquity. So these stories were passed down to me orally in the very sacred places where the stories took place. Here I am having a family picnic on Mount Olympus where the Greek gods lived. Well, they weren't actually real, but for me as a child, they felt so close and so alive. So I learned from a very young age the importance of being able to elegantly blur fiction with reality. Mythology is important. Every culture has their myths to dream and live by. Every culture has this. So beyond entertainment and spectacle, the function of myth is to teach us to cope with loss. But what I love most about myth is that it prevented me from thinking in a linear way and an ideological shift took place for me from the contained and finite story with a very distinctive beginning, middle and end to infinitely expanding story worlds that force you to see the interconnectedness of everything. So with a childhood of being addicted to these infinite worlds, you can imagine my delight when jumping forward 25 years in time and I've landed this job at the BBC where I'm given responsibility for commissioning transmedia for the BBC's most iconic shows, Doctor Who. As a child, when I watched Doctor Who, I found it really scary. I used to watch behind the sofa and occasionally I still have to avert my gaze. The monsters still terrify me. That's because the essence of Doctor Who has stayed constant across its 48-year history. It's the longest running science fiction series ever created and its longevity is due to the fact that it's more than just sci-fi, it's an anthology show. It crosses all genres from drama to horror to comedy and it's created to thrill the child in all of us. And of course, who doesn't want to take a magical time ride to save the world as indeed the Doctor does in every episode? Who is the Doctor? He's a Time Lord who travels back and forth in time in a police box time machine, tiny on the outside, massive on the inside, called the TARDIS. The first time I visited the Doctor Who set in Wales was definitely a career highlight. There I was in the TARDIS with the Doctor's sonic screwdriver. Amazing. Such is the magical sway of the story. I knew I was on a set, but at that moment, once again, fiction and reality blurred. And I thought to myself, how fantastic would it be to give all Doctor Who fans this experience of not just watching the show, but being able to step into this deep mythological space for themselves? What if you could actually be the Doctor and save the universe? So this is the motive that led us to design the Doctor Who Adventure Games. In 2010, the BBC created 17 episodes of Doctor Who, 13 TV episodes, and four extra episodes that were actually games three hours of extra gameplay within each. This has been, I think, a very unique moment in television and transmedia history, to finally have this type of seamless TV transmedia story world integration. One of my favorite mon moments was when I took the games designers to the TARDIS to collaborate with the show's team. Charles, the game writer, asked, what's that door over there? And they replied, that's your door. Take it, use it, do what you like with it. Take the doctor to places that we can't take him on the telly. So in that moment, after years of working across the silos of traditional media organizations, desperately trying to get people to understand how transmedia could enrich their stories, in that moment we'd finally achieved what we thought was impossible, to get into the very DNA of a production and create stories and characters on par with the rest of the franchise. With these games, we've managed to future-proof the audience of, you know, for a new generation of kids, but also to give the die-hard fans the ability to step into a time machine. I know I've been gushing in a very Doctor Who geeky manner right now about this show. It's an occupational hazard. But I think all the most amazing and effective transmedia 
is born out of connecting with your inner fan. Without the feverish passion of a fan, you can't deliver the best experience. You've got to tap into the collective unconscious, the muse, the universe, whatever you want to call this unlimited energy that is the origin of all grand narratives. I try to get to this nonverbal place uh, at the core of the story where I'm not thinking but feeling. It's like learning a new language. Once you start dreaming a language, you know you finally mastered it. As storytellers, we need to tap into mythology to reach into this collective unconscious and tell the stories that matter, the stories that help people deal with the secret pains of life that no one is immune to, the things we all have to face at some point of love and loss and love and loss. This never-ending dance of life. It's in the most recent episode of Doctor Who. The Doctor is lamenting his impending death, for even Time Lords can't avoid this very real pain. We can use transmedia to try <coughs> ideas out in a game space before the real world, to understand consequences, to connect with each other through magic travels through time and space. Magical mythologies are an essential tool for helping people through the cycle of life. It's the perfect way to ease people through beginnings, endings and transitions in a way that leads to actual change in their life. At the beginning of my life, my mother told me stories to help me cope with the years ahead of me of the Greek gods and how they dealt with life's dramas. At the end of her life, I told her stories that helped her confront her last days with courage. What if we could comfort, inspire and encourage each other with transmedia? What if we could take that Doctor Who approach, that successful recipe of 48 years of entertaining and find a unique way to add a magical layer onto our very real world stories? <laughs>